the Marines can now use umbrellas. And I'll be honest, I didn't even know there was a no umbrellas rule for the Marines. <laughs> but it makes sense, it makes sense. Because if you're a Marine and you have an umbrella and it flips inside out, you've gone from badass to Mr. Bean. There's no cool anything there. <laughs> There's nothing cool about that. Because umbrellas just aren't tough, right? I don't care who, like imagine Braveheart holding an umbrella. They can take our lives. <laughs> but if my hair gets wet, it turns into an afro. <laughs> I will say this, though. I think adding umbrellas is actually a, gonna be a great tactical advancement for the Marines, because now, whenever they're going into a mission, they can just Mary Poppins their way into a war zone. <laughs> yeah. The enemy will be looking up like, Commander, we are getting attacked, or we're getting a new nanny. Either way, it's gonna be bad. <laughs> All right, but let's move on. Let's move on to the fad that's been sweeping the nation for the last few years. Gender reveal parties. Every day, they're getting crazier and crazier. Explosions. Alligators shooting sound waves into a woman's belly to see if there's a penis. This shit is crazy now. <laughs> but over the weekend, one gender reveal in Texas may have finally gone too far. The excited parents to be on the ground as the plane approaches. A crop dusting plane dropping 350 gallons of pink water. It's a girl. But minutes later, I had a plane crash just north of Brown Buchanan's place. It all goes terribly wrong, crashing into this mangled heap of metal. The plane was carrying two people, but only designed for one. Tyler is out of the aircraft. Hey, Jim, patient number 212 is gonna be a male. Deny any injuries. Wow. That seemed more like a pilot reveal party. Guess what, guys? I'm actually not a pilot. <laughs> Or maybe this was the parents we were revealing that the baby was an accident. Maybe that was the whole thing. <laughs> I'm actually glad. I'm actually glad that everybody survived because that is wild. And can we agree on something? Can we agree on something? These gender reveals, you know you've gone too far if your gender reveal planning sounds the same as an ISIS plot, all right? <laughs> if you're walking around like, all right, we need some gunpowder in an airplane. That's what we need. <laughs> Seriously, it's, it's getting out of hand. I remember back in the day when gender reveal just meant some guy in a park would rock up in a trench coat and reveal his gender to you. Those were simpler times. So simple. So simple. And finally, in technology news, if you got dumped this year because your ex said you didn't communicate enough, it might not have been your fault. If you received a mysterious text message this week from someone unexpected, you are not alone. This happened to a lot of people yesterday. They reported they received messages that appear to have originally been sent on or around Valentine's Day this year. One person tweeted, so at 2.30 this morning, my phone decided to send a text to my ex-girlfriend from nine months ago. She made this really sweet video of us for Valentine's Day. She thought I didn't respond, so that led to, among other things, a ruined holiday. So, you know, that's how today is going. <laughs> oh, no. Man, this story is crazy. Apparently, a bunch of text messages sent on Valentine's Day only got to people's phones now. Yeah, it's a huge glitch that affected thousands of people. Nobody knew about it, and now it's in the news. And I bet a lot of guys are using this as an excuse, like... <laughs> oh, wait, wait, you didn't get that giant bouquet and that diamond necklace that I texted you? Oh, my God. <laughs> AT&T, man. <laughs> AT&T. But, yeah, a, a bunch of Valentine's texts didn't go through, and it sucks. But I'm gonna be honest. If your relationship ended over a missed text, maybe that was the best. You dodged the bullets. Because <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. Texting is supposed to be casual. It's not about an immediate response. That's why this isn't a problem for old people. They still send love letters in the mail. You know, be like, Dearest Gertrude, I can't wait to tap that tight bran muffin of yours. <laughs> Respectfully, Harold. The craziest part of the story, and this is completely true, the craziest part of the story is that some people got text messages from people who have since died. Yeah, that has got to be the most awkward booty call ever. <laughs> Can you imagine just on your phone? It's like, you up? You're like, are you up? 